shot. One shot. You bust that there target, a hickory stick, and you get this prime, fresh turkey. It's gonna go to the winner. Yes, sir, Donald, it's your turn to festivities. We know you can do it. Dead shot, right smack dab on the target. And I declare the winner of this prime, fresh turkey to go to... Uh, may I compete, sir? I uh, should appreciate the chance to try my skill. I uh, fancy some turkey. Well, sure thing. You're right welcome. I thank you. But you, uh, you, you ain't got no rifle. Well, you can use mine. Uh, no, thank you. I'll, uh, I'll use this. What's that for, mister? Mosquitoes? <laughs> <laughs> you, you ain't serious. You're really gonna shoot with that thing? Well, certainly. I'll, uh, split the remaining half of that twig. Well, the target's yours. Good luck. <laughs> Turkey. That was mighty fine shooting. My name's Daniel Boone. Thank you. My name is Burr. Aaron Burr. Aaron Burr. Vice President of the United States? Ex-Vice President. each other, so they had a duel. With pistols? With pistols. They stood back to back, took ten paces forward. Turned and fired! And Mr. Alexander Hamilton fell dead. That was a fair fight, according to what Cincinnati says. Just one thing I can't figure out. What's that? What's the ex-vice president of these United States doing in Boonesboro? What's he doing in the wilderness? If you please, gentlemen, a little more hot water for Mr. Burr. Right away. Come on up high. Well, now, you never jumped so quick or worked so fast for Cincinnati before. Well, we never had no vice president of the United States here before. Besides, no one ever knows when opportunity might knock. Come in. Table? Yes. Ah, oh, thank you, lad. Well, go on. You can handle it if you wish. <laughs> a rich man's gun. Have you ever fired one? I ain't a rich man. You resent men of wealth? I may be living out in the wilderness, but I ain't crazy yet. <laughs> what do you call <laughs> that? Jericho, Jericho Jones. Jericho Jones. This is Lemus O'Leary. He's my good right hand. You've got a sharp tongue, even if you're not an Irishman. What is a bright, quick-witted lad like you doing here in this wilderness? I'm earning a dollar a week and my room and board. What's an ex-vice president of the United States doing here? Maybe your tongue's a little too sharp. Man don't learn nothing by keeping it locked up. I'm traveling, Jericho. I'm traveling for my own pleasure. Who among you here knows these lands west of the Alleghenies best, Jericho? Can you tell me? You mean after me? 
Yes, after you. Daniel Boone, of course. Why? Well, I'm curious, that's all. I'm really curious. Oh, that hot water is so refreshing. My compliments to Mr. Cincinnati. You're all invited to a little social gathering here tonight. You mean a hoedown? A what? A hoedown, a party. Oh, yes, yes, I see. Well, then you're all invited to a hoedown. The ladies, too, of course. I'll have Mr. Cincinnati prepare some punch, and uh, Lamus here will uh, play his bagpipes. I want all of Boonesboro to be my guest tonight. Wow. Oh, uh, Jericho. Here. This is for you. A whole dollar? This is the easiest dollar I ever made. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Aaron Burr. Just look at those boots. What's the matter with them? That's real Spanish leather. I'll bet they cost at least $10. Seems Jericho judges a man by the cost of his boots. Anybody who wears moccasins doesn't know anything about boots. Boots tell a lot about a man, what kind of fellow he must be. Now hold on, Jericho. You don't know anything about what kind of man Aaron Burr is. All you're seeing is how he acts, and only how he acts right now. Well, I'll bet he owns a big house up north, and he has 50 servants and carriages and horses, and he goes to hoedowns every night. And he got tired of it, and that's why he's out here in the wilderness. Permitting me the pleasure of dancing with your wife. Oh, you make me feel like a fine dancer, Mr. Burr. It was my pleasure and delight, ma'am. Now, why can't the men of Boonesboro be as gallant as that? <clears throat> well, I guess uh, we just have limited talents, Becky. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'd better help the ladies with the refreshments. Excuse me? May I uh, offer you gentlemen cigars? Well, thanks all the same. Well, thank you. <clears throat> Much obliged. Uh, Mr. Boone, I wonder if you and I might uh, step outside for a breath of cool air. I have something I'd like to discuss with you. Well, talk never hurt anyone. Might prove to be to our mutual advantage as well. After you. Jericho, I reckon you ain't grown up enough yet to smoke them rich man cigars. <coughs> well, it's not like Washington, is it? No, it's not. I don't mind telling you, Mr. Boone, that I miss it. To have been vice president of these United States, to have lived in Washington, oh, it glitters there, Mr. Boone. It glitters with excitement, with power. And out here, it's kind of rough and simple. You have some sort of prejudice against me, don't you, Mr. Boone? Why? Because of the duel with Alexander Hamilton? Because I had the good luck to kill him instead of him killing me? Seems to me it had nothing to do with luck. Only who was the most expert with the gun. Now, you were saying something about to our mutual advantage. Yes. I'm looking for a guide, a man to lead me to the mouth of the Cumberland River. And I think that you are that man, Mr. Boone. The mouth of the Cumberland River. It's a far piece. I know that. Then you know it's kind of dangerous. There are Indians all along the way, and they're not particularly friendly. I'm aware of that, too. 
How come you want to go? I enjoy sporting adventures. And you're fine with a gun. Will you guide me and my man Lamus, Mr. Boone? You'll be paid well. Very well. There's uh, one condition. A condition? Yes. I must be at the mouth of the Cumberland River in 10 days. No later. Why the rush? I understood this was to be a sporting adventure. My reasons are personal. No concern of yours. Now listen to me, Mr. Boone. I can make you a rich man, an important, powerful man, if you'll guide me. Rich, important, powerful? That sounds like three thunderclaps, Mr. Burr. I can do it. You get me to the mouth of the Cumberland River in 10 days, and you'll see. You're leaving something out. And I think you've got me wrong. I'm not the kind of man who does things without seeing his way clear. And this thing don't make sense to me. An ex-vice president of the United States out here in the wilderness on a sporting adventure. You're going to make me rich and powerful? Sounds more like a bribe to me, Mr. Burr. You must trust me, Mr. Bone. That's just it. I can't. Well, why not, in heaven's name? Why not? Because you don't give me a single trustful feeling in my bones. Jericho. It's me, Aaron Burr. Uh, I was dreaming. I was, I was living in a big house and I was sleeping in a great soft bed. Now there's a coincidence. You were dreaming and here was I coming over to help you get exactly that. Huh? There's $200 in here, Jericho, all in gold pieces. How would you like to earn all of it? What? There's even a chance you might earn more. Much more. Do you know the country between here and the mouth of the Cumberland River? Sure I know it. Sort of a dumb question. I live here, don't I? Watch your tongue, lad. He asked me a question, I gave him a straight answer. No, it's all right, Lemus. I like this boy's spirit. Will you give me another straight answer? Sure. Are you familiar with the habits of the Indians in these parts? No, I'm like the back of my hand. Why? I might want to hire your services as a guide. Now, I must reach the mouth of the Cumberland River in 10 days. Can you get me there? Mr. Burr, for $200, I'll get you there in a week. Splendid. Can we start tomorrow? <laughs> we can start right now. No, no, tomorrow's soon enough. Then it's a deal. Yep, it sure is. Oh, oh, wait, wait a minute. Oh, yes, I understand. Payment. Huh? And uh, when do you get it? Oh, let's say, uh, say fifty dollars now, and the rest when our journey is done. 
You know something? It's the first time I ever had more than five dollars of my own. <laughs> Give a man notice, boy, quits. I gave you notice. Two hours. Now, look, I gotta go to Richmond for goods, and I gotta have someone in here to take care of this place while I'm gone. Let go, Cincinnati. I got things to do. Please. Let him alone, old man. We've got no time to waste. Well, why don't you just mind your own business? You think I'm scared of you? That's enough, Lemus. You better watch yourself. That old man's a tiger when he's riled up. You going somewhere, boy? I took a new job. It's no concern of yours. Oh? You hire him, Mr. Burr, to guide you? Well, it's a free country. I believe I can hire a man if I wish to, for wages. Well, Jericho, uh, it's a long way to the Cumberland. And to do it in 10 days, that makes it even rougher. Now, how do you know where we're going? I turned down the job last night. Well, I'm not turning it down. He's paying me good money, big money. Jericho, I don't believe you've got the experience for this kind of trip. I got enough, and it's all learned from you. Ah, uh, don't be pig-headed, boy. Now, listen, I'm not staying here for a dollar a week and living like a dog in a shed. I got a chance to get a big stake and get out of here. I got a chance to meet gentlemen, to learn other things besides how to skin a bear. That man's gonna pay me $200. You hear that? $200. And that's only a beginning, Jericho. There may even be greater rewards in the future. I take it you're doing this just for money. You're darn tootin'. Look at this place. Mud and dirt. And I'm stuck behind a counter selling ladies dry goods and doodads. I'm sleeping on straw, eating bear meat and grits. I'm living like an animal here. I'm getting out of here, Mr. Boone, and you're not gonna stop me. Well, there's just one thing you didn't learn from me, boy. What's that? Money's not everything. Can't you see that there's something wrong with this? I think you've said enough. Have I? Well, I haven't even started yet. Jericho, Mr. Burr tells you he's traveling for pleasure. Where? Just through hostile Indian country. And that's not pleasure, that's dangerous. And he's in an awful hurry to get someplace, and he's willing to pay a lot of money for it. Now, anybody's bound to figure out that there's a catch to it. What's he up to, really? You're liable to get yourself into a pack of trouble. Now, you listen to me and forget the whole thing. Let the boy alone and get out of here, man. Lemus, why don't you go play with your bagpipes? <laughs> Listen to me. And if he doesn't, will you bang the boy's head up against a wall, too? All I'm trying to do, mister, is save him from future grief. This is the only thing that's going to save me from future grief. Money in my pouch. I got a lot more coming, and you're not going to stop me from getting it. Unless you want to fight me, too. I'm guiding for Mr. Burr. A story I will tell. His name was Jimmy Brennan, and in Ireland he did well. Twas on the Culloden Mountains he began his wild career. And many a wealthy gentleman before him shook with fear. 
What's he singing? Brennan on the Moor, an old Irish battle song. Well, he ain't going to war, is he? <laughs> well, he might be, Jericho. He very well might be. How much longer to the Cumberland? About a week. We're traveling pretty fast. Oh. And what will you do when we arrive? <laughs> Collect my money. <laughs> There's a lad who's nothing but all gleed. Look, don't you tell me what I am, mister. Now, Lemus. Jericho, now, I know that you want that money to become a gentleman, to wear boots like mine, to own a pistol with silver chasings. But it's going to take more than $200, more than 500 more than a thousand. What do you mean? Well, it takes a certain kind of good manners and a certain sense of honor, and it takes an education. It takes reading books like this to become a gentleman. What's it called? It's by Livy, an ancient writer. It's in Latin. It's a history of Rome. I could learn all those things, couldn't I? <laughs> Latin, not you, lad. Not in your lifetime. Why don't you keep your big, fat tongue shut in your mouth, mister? I don't like you. There's one thing I do know. A gentleman isn't a snob. Touché. That Latin? No. <laughs> no, that's French. Would you like me to teach you these things, Jericho? You gonna make me pay for the lessons? No, no, you won't owe me a thing. <laughs> Not a single thing. citizens. The United States government has received reports of a conspiracy and after investigation discovered that a plot exists to separate the states of Kentucky, Tennessee, and the Carolinas from the rest of this union. Hey. Just quiet down. Let him go on reading. The plan is to set up a separate nation west of the Allegheny Mountains. The government declares that the leader in this plot is Aaron Burr. Yeah. All citizens are urged to seize this man if he appears in their midst. He is wanted for treason, signed and sealed on this day. Colonel William Thomas commanded Fort Pitt. Uh -huh. mm. Dan, where are you going? If they arrest Aaron Burr for treason, they'll take Jericho, too. party to meet General Byrne. Two days ahead of us. Well, what do you know? Hmm? 
Somebody's been riding on bark with charcoal. That's Latin. Veni, vidi, vici. I came, I saw, I conquered. Somebody's riding Latin out here in the wilderness. Can you look? Hawkinson sign. Four or five braves, maybe. Mm, they creak. Hunting party. They're moving directly ahead of us. Between us and Jericho. Let's go. That is a pair of perfectly matched weapons, Jericho. They're English, and uh, they were made especially for me. Here. When class is over, maybe we can be getting on. Soon, Lamus. Soon. Are you sure you've never fired one of these before? I've never even aimed one before. Oh? Well, you do as I do. You stand straight to the weapon. That's right. Now line it up with your body. Now raise the weapon over your head. That's fine. You're learning fast. Now bring the weapon down cleanly. In a straight line, Jericho. Sight the target. Now fire. You did that exactly as a gentleman would. Isn't that so, Lemus? The spitting image. It's got a kick. This little thing has got a kick. Of course. Everything dangerous has, lad. Would you like to try it again? Sure. Indians! Get into the trees! You can't go back there. Give me your gun. We're one day from the Cumberland River. We don't need him. Let the Indians have him. Just let's get out of here. Let go. Are you all right? You came back for me alone? You will admit you were in considerable trouble, Jericho. He could have gotten away, though. That's true. You could have saved yourself $150, too. Ah, but money, Jericho. Money isn't everything. I also happen to like and respect you. Thanks for saving my life. That's a mean bit of thanks out of the side of his mouth. Or does it pain you to say it? I'm not thanking you, mister. You didn't come back. And I wouldn't. Your hide's not worth saving. You've got a small mind and a mean soul. Now, it's all right, Jericho, I understand. You'd do the same thing for me, wouldn't you? The exact same thing for me? Yes, of course. Thank you. It's more than money now that makes us friends. And what Thank are we going to do? Stand around here like it's a family reunion while the rest of the blasted tribe come after us? Towards us. It must be that hunting party. And there's only three of them, and they've lost their bows. This just might be the end of their little hunting party. Let's check them for scalps. Let me have your whip. Peace. 
It is him, the one the pale face called Boone. We're looking for three pale faces headed toward the great river. Have you seen them? Two who have many years and one who is young? Yes, we see them. We know fight them. We have pity. We are warriors of great honor. We no harm defenseless travelers. I'll wager there was a fight. These creeks were beaten and ran away. It's got that sound. By now, friends of the great boon must be near river. They must be with others who wait there. What are you talking about? Many already on river. Big war party of pale faces. They camp on Cumberland. They have many guns. And many boats. Other creek warriors see them. Many men on Cumberland. Your friends are there by now. That sounds like an army camping on the Cumberland. Burr. They must be waiting for Burr. We'd better find Jericho and quickly. That's a fact. We've got to stop Burr before he reaches his army on the river. I'll let you go if you'll promise to go to Fort Pitt and tell Colonel Thomas exactly what you've told me. Will you do it? Yes, you have our word. Give the Colonel this telescope. He'll know it came from me. Well, the Creeks have been known to keep their word. I just hope they don't get lost. <laughs> Jericho, all right. He's off key. Could drive a man mad with you, Wesleyan. Stow it, will you? Ah, uh, Lamus. Well, he's getting on my nerves, and I. Evening, gentlemen. Daniel. Jericho, I recommend you put that rifle down, Lamus. Well, this is a surprise. You're most welcome, Mr. Boone. Won't you join us? There's a little brandy and some coffee. We didn't come this far for a social gathering, Mr. Burr. We came for him. I can take care of myself, Daniel. I told you that back in Boonesboro. We've come to get you before you get yourself jailed or maybe hung as a traitor. What? Hung as a traitor. What the devil are you talking about now? Don't, unless you want to get yourself blown in two. Well, those were very unkind words you addressed to Jericho, Mr. Boone. Just what are they supposed to mean? What has the lad done? You're as slippery as a greased pig, aren't you? Don't talk like that to Mr. Burr. You're Mr. Burr, Jericho, is wanted by the whole United States for treason. There's a proclamation up and down the frontier signed by Colonel Thomas calling for his arrest. Treason? That's right. And what am I supposed to be doing that's treasonable? Plotting a war? Separating the Western states from the rest of the Union. Planning on a private empire west of the Alleghenies. With two men? With Lamus and a 20-year-old boy? A man might need an army to do such a thing as that. You've got an army, Mr. Burr. Waiting for you on the Cumberland. Boats, men, and arms. They were seen by the Creeks. I don't believe it. 
Did I ever lie to you, boy? Mr. Burr wouldn't do any such thing. Well, right now, I'm not so concerned about your Mr. Burr and his army. They'll get caught. But I am troubled about getting you out of here. Now, get your pack. I'm not taking orders from you now. Jericho, you can make up that money some other way. It's got nothing to do with money. Can't you understand that? Money isn't everything. Well, that's not what you said to me back in Boonesboro. So what? Right now, money has got nothing to do with it. I owe him something. He saved my life. Now, Jericho... And he's teaching me things. He's making me a gentleman. Besides, I don't believe those things you said about him. He's a fine man, maybe the finest one I've ever known. And I can learn a lot more from him than I can Boonesboro in that dog run of a shed. You're coming with us. You're gonna have to drag me. If we have to, we will. I still ain't coming with you. I'm staying with Mr. Burr. In that case, I guess we'll have to take all of you back. The president is asking all citizens to seize and arrest this man. And that's just what I'm going to do. I'm arresting you for treason, Mr. Burr. Are you, mister? Get their rifles. Thank you. You arrived just in time. When advance party, General, come up to meet you. The rest of the brigade are waiting on the Cumberland. This is part of my army, Mr. Boone. I have 200 others down by the river. Do you know what you are, Mr. Boone? You are my first prisoner of war. supposed to be 25. Yes, sir. We have 10 more coming down from Ohio, from Marietta, with volunteers. When will they be there? Tomorrow, the day after, no later. Then down to New Orleans, and we begin. That's right, General. I brought him some coffee. Well, now, that's the right gentlemanly thing to do. He don't look so good. Mm -hmm. As if he didn't get any sleep at all last night. Something worrying you, Jerry Cole? Do you want the coffee or don't you? Well, I think that depends on whether you're bringing it as a friend or a traitor. Oh, Jericho, the meeting's over, lad, so pack up. We'll be moving out soon. I want to talk to you. Well, no, later. No, now. I ain't had a chance to get it straight, and I'm going to do it right now. Are you or aren't you a traitor? That's a very unpleasant word, Jericho. I don't like it. Well, neither do I. But is it true? You know something, Jericho? What? You question me the way a son would question his father. I'll answer you, lad. I'll answer you. Everything has escaped me, Jericho. Do you know that? The rewards. All of the best rewards always went to somebody else. I have always been left behind. During the revolution, they denied me a generalship. I commanded brigades against the British in New Jersey on Long Island. I fought and I won my battles. And still they denied me a generalship. I should have been president of these United States. They denied me that too. It went to Jefferson. You ain't answering me. I am answering you. I am talking to you about fate, my fate. Always to have been beaten out by others with less talent, less energy, less ability. You know me, boy. You've been with me. Am I an inferior man? No. Well, then it's time that I seize fate. I grab it. I hold on to it. I make my own destiny. I take what I should have. From who? I will have 25 flatboats down on the Cumberland River. 
with 200 men, all armed and all loyal to me. And that's only a beginning, Jericho. More will come and join me later. Now listen to me, Jericho, because it's true. I do plan on setting up my own nation. West of the Alleghenies? West of the Alleghenies, just as Daniel Boone said. Tennessee, Kentucky, Mississippi, Louisiana. I'll cut those states off from the Union to give these poor, forgotten people out here in the wilderness an empire of their own. And I can do it, Jericho. I can do it. And Boone. What about Daniel Boone? I give you my word that no harm will come to him. Then you'll let him go right now. No. Not now. Later. You think that I'm a wicked man, don't you, Jericho? You think I'm evil? Well, if you want to go, we can settle up now. I owe you something. Owe me something? $150. You may take it and go if you wish. But I'd rather you didn't leave, Jericho. We've become friends, haven't we? Yeah. I've a daughter, Jericho. I've no son. But if I'd had one, I'd want him to be just like you. Now stay with me, lad. Trust me and come with me. You've believed in me up to now, haven't you? Yes. Then go on believing in me. I need every man at my side, Jericho. Men I can depend on. Men I can trust. Now, which will it be? The money or me? I don't know. I'm going to have to think about it. Don't think, lad. Trust your feelings. Trust your heart. Well? Maybe you're right. Maybe I should follow my feelings. That's what I wanted to hear, Jericho. I'm glad. General! General! <laughs> troops, federal troops, coming up the trail. What? Yes, a big party of them. They found us. They must have all run our men at the river. We've got to get out of here. You've got to escape. Go on. Get your rifle. Come on, move! Empty rifle. Come on. I said drop it. Now that's better, because this one's empty. Mr. Boone, you can stop right there, Mr. Burr. Mr. Boone, I must not be captured. Do you understand that? I must not be captured. You already have been. What do you intend to do with me? I was your prisoner of war, Mr. Burr. Now you're mine. I'll pay you, Mr. Boone. If you let me go, I'll pay you all the money I have. Listen, it's near a thousand dollars in gold. You can have it if you let me go. You're going in the wrong direction, Mr. Burr. I'm still not doing business with traitors. And I want you to meet those federal troops. Now turn around and march. Drop the rifle, Daniel. He ain't going anywhere. Jericho, you've come to help. I mean it, Daniel. Drop that rifle. It seems these woods are full of traitors. 
Let it be, Lemus. Don't touch it. We better hurry, Jericho. We better get away. We'll start all over again. We'll gather another army. You'll be my second in command. I knew I could trust you. I knew I could depend on you, Jericho. You said that I should listen to my feelings, didn't you? Well, I'd done just that. And you know what they told me? What? They told me that you used me. Everything you told me was a lie. All the time you were using me to be a traitor. Using me as if I was nothing, like it didn't matter what I really thought or what I believed in. There's a thousand dollars here, Jericho. It's yours if you let me go. That's it. In the end, you think of me as just something you can buy. Jericho, let me go and take the money. I'm going to help you, and I'm going to help everybody with this. You taught me how to use it, remember? Give me the gun, Mingo. Here's your pistol. Defend yourself. Stay where you are. Mr. Burr. gone. Run away from all his friends. I tried to shoot him. I just couldn't do it. And I, I want to go back to Boonesboro. I want to go home. It's just where we're going. Captured him, all right. Still a good-looking man, though, isn't he? Well, that won't keep them from trying him for treason. Well, that's a fact. Sick, transit glory. That's Latin, son. So passes all glory. Do you know Latin? Sure, I know some Latin. You just never ask me. Well, you can teach me. Let's get home. Come on. <laughs> Yeah. 